All right, we're here at my tiny worm bin, and today we're gonna do two things. I'm gonna add a food I don't want to add, and I'll explain why later. But first, the first thing I wanna do is check on last week's experiment where we added pulverized oats on one side and cornstarch on the other. So this is day one, and you can see on the pulverized oats side, it's completely gone, but most of the cornstarch is still there. And by day two, about half of the cornstarch is gone, and I can start to see mites. And by day three, everything is gone. There's a lot of mites. In fact, on that piece of broccoli right there, there's a lot of mites. And right here is where that broccoli was. So we're gonna go ahead and take this paper off if I can. It may just kind of fall apart and see how things are doing. Those top feedings have been going pretty well for me, so I'm gonna keep doing them. But you know, after three days, corn starch completely gone. So I think we can mix that in our worm chow. So after I saw all those mites on top, I did put in some bread to kind of bait some out just because I don't want to be totally overrun with mites. And I think that food kind of attracted the ones that were in here and I just didn't want their populations to bloom. So I did that for a couple days, just put in some wet bread and then left that in there for a couple hours and then threw that bread out. Now, one of the things I'm noticing is that this is just totally moist. A little bit more moist for my liking. It really sticks together and doesn't really crumble apart. So what I'm gonna do is take off that bubble wrap and that should help dry it out. Now this bin is 115 days old, so we are getting closer and closer to harvesting. So I wanna start just kind of drying it out a little bit and this will help by taking that bubble wrap off. Now, as I go through here, these are just some big, fat, juicy, beautiful purple worms. They're red wigglers and they are just looking really healthy. So they are very happy. And let's go on this side. And this side is the side that we fed, I think two feedings ago. So no food in there last time. And it's looking pretty good. There are worms all throughout. So, oh yeah, there's a bunch right there. So they have eaten everything in here pretty much. So they're just exploring everywhere. And right here is a really good example of a mature worm. And this portion of it right here is called the clitellum. And that's how you know that your worms are sexually reproductive and ready to go. And right here is the end of that same worm, just a little bit of an orange tip, one of the telltale signs of a red wiggler, a bulging clitellum and a little bit of an orange tip. So let's keep looking around. And there's no pooling on the bottom of my bin here but there is some pretty heavy glistening, so a little bit more moisture than I'm used to. When you have a bin that doesn't drain, moisture control is gonna be a little bit more important for you than if you have a worm tower or a bin that just is able to drain, like my outdoor bin, which is two 20-gallon fabric pots. So this bin is really tiny. It's, I call it my tiny worm bin. It is three gallons, and right here, we're about a third of the way up, so we have a little bit less than a gallon and a half of actual material in here. And the number of worms is that we started with anyway is 600. So there's probably a little bit more than that, but I don't know that this bin can hold much more than 600. They might reach their carrying capacity and stop at 600 or somewhere around there. This I think is still a little piece of rose stem that we're working on and a little bit of baby breath stem. So let's go ahead and explore the, the side that had the food and we might see a little something here of course, we're gonna see some bedding because I always put in new bedding with each feeding. So on this side, we're getting some of our cardboard shreds. Here, it looks like I thought I saw maybe a piece of, here we go. This looks like possibly a piece of tomato skin or apple skin, probably tomato skin. What they do is they just eat every bit of flesh and what is left is almost a clear piece of almost plastic looking film that is on the tomato. So that's pretty neat. They'll probably eat that by the time we come back in next time. I'm gonna keep digging down in this corner and we'll pull up more of the bedding and a ton of worms, which is great. And we'll come over here. And what I like to do with my bins, big and small, is aerate them so that oxygen can get down to all the little crevices, especially in a moist bin like this. Whoa, lots, oh yeah, lots of worms right there. You can see the fat adult worms and then some of the thinner juveniles. And really down in there, you can see some babies, but not too many. But yeah, they're, they're looking great. 
really active and really great. So anyway, yeah, I like to air it out and it also allows me to see if there's any pockets of fermentation or different smells that I just know shouldn't be in a worm bin. Anything that smells bad to your nose is because that's bacteria that are feeding in a environment that has a lack of oxygen. So don't smell any of that. It smells just like sweet earth. It's just, it just smells so good. And just tons of, there's a little baby right there. Probably a couple weeks old. Not as small as one that was recently born. And then on this finger, this one may be, maybe a week old right there. All right, let's keep going in here. I think we have managed to go through the whole bin. So I'm gonna move all the material on this side and then we will get into our feeding that I am feeding under duress. And the reason I say I'm feeding under duress is because of the person that wants me to feed this. Now I get a lot of comments of suggestions of things to feed or things to do in my worm bin and I am so appreciative of all of them. And the ones that I do are the ones that I want to do and that I think would work well in my bin. But there are two people that no matter what they say, I will give it a try. And one is the executive producer who is behind the camera right now. But the other is my mom who has been enjoying the videos. And you know, since she gave birth to me, I figure if she wants me to put something in the worm bin, I'll put it in there. So today we're putting something I don't wanna put in here. And that is mac and cheese. I really don't wanna put anything dairy in my worm bin. You can. Um, but I don't particularly want to see what happens or the smells or that kind of thing. And the one kind of cheese I've put in here is vegan cheese, but that's not really cheese at all. And you know, maybe this isn't cheese at all because I think it's powdered cheese or something. You boil the pasta and then you put some kind of powdered cheese or something in there. So maybe this isn't really cheese, but anyway, this is for my mom. She wants me to do mac and cheese. So we're going to do a little bit of this when we feed. So since we're over a month out and I want to continue to bulk this up, I'm gonna add some more shredded cardboard. And shredded cardboard with a little bit of shredded newspaper is my bedding of choice. You can use leaves, you can use paper towels. You don't have to shred it like this, but this helps them get to it quicker. So that's what I like to do as far as bedding. And then what I do right after the bedding is I'll put in whatever foods I'm gonna feed. So I'm just gonna grab a handful. I will probably use the rest of this in my outdoor bin, which is about 10 times bigger than this. So we'll just add a little bit. I don't wanna pile it up too high. And I definitely want to have room to bury it because I do not want to smell any of this. This is an indoor bin. And as long as you bury your food scraps under a good portion of the bedding and castings that are left, everything should work out fine for you. So there we go. And then just in case they're not too fond of that, I'm going to give them some of our normal food. This is just a cucumber from the garden and a couple of strawberries right here. They absolutely love both of those. And the strawberries and the cucumber are definitely fast foods. I'm just going to clean up my glove real quick and then we'll put this in there as well. And then we'll add up the little bit of juice that was left in that food scraps. And now we'll add our amendments. Everybody that's been watching for a while will be happy to know that this is the end of the pulverized oats. So let's go ahead and get those in there. And these are just pulverized oats that had been in my pantry expired for four years, a whole package of it, two pounds. So I've been grinding it and slowly adding them. Next thing I like to add in is some pulverized eggshells, and these are the grit that I use. They use grit to grind up their food instead of digestive juices. It also helps in my garden as well. And then finally, I like to add a little bit of used coffee grounds, just a good place for them for me, and it's a great food source for them. Now, as you probably noticed, all of those pulverized really tiny bits of food and eggshells went in in very small quantities. And that's just because when they get moist, they can clump up and make it a little bit harder for the worms to get to. So let's go ahead and bury this up and we will add a little bit of a top feeding with some of our amendments. If you like this video, I appreciate if you give me a like and consider subscribing. I've got a couple other worm bins that I mentioned. My Fermi Hut Worm Tower, and then also my outdoor bin. Both of them have way more worms than this one. I think my outdoor bin has around 6,000 and my Worm Tower has about 4,000. I do lots of different experiments in there and I run them very differently. So let's go ahead and get our top amendments. So here we go, in with just a light powdering of pulverized oats. 
And you may notice that it's harder for me to get to this top area. And that's just because I have the bin on a little bit of an incline as I'm filming. Makes it a little bit easier to have it looking good for you and edit it. So there we go. So let's attempt to get one more use out of this newspaper. And if it's not going to work out, what I'll do is I'll come in at some point during the week and I'll add another piece of newspaper. But I think we might <laughs> barely have the ability to use this to cover up. And I'm not going to put that bubble wrap because we want this to dry out a little bit. So we'll go ahead and add this like so. And then we will call that a feeding. So I hope everybody's having a great day. I hope your warm bins are going well. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.